So, Kirti here from Vistara News. Here, sir. Hi, Hi sir. Uh, cutting down of 31 kgs and the transformation, how did your family and friends react to it? And uh, what was your uh, chart diet? Diet chart, how was it? For the first part of your question, my family and friends did not like it at all, obviously, because I wasn't looking good. It wasn't like a nice weight loss. You know? I wasn't looking good. And my mother at one point called, bless you, sir, and told him, please tell him to stop. Uh, but bless, you, bless you, sir, never asked me to stop also. Okay, So, uh, so yeah, I mean, so idea behind the transformation, we never kept a goal that, okay, these many kilos or anything. The idea was, I lose as much as I can. And... Uh, to be honest, I surprised myself. I didn't expect that I would be able to achieve what I eventually was able to achieve. Uh, regarding the diet, see, uh, usually when I've also gone through transformations physically for many films, and usually it's like either you lose a bit of weight or you go to the gym and you put on muscle and you six pack and all that. That I've also done. But here, what you're trying to achieve is the physicality of a man who was starving, who did not have access to enough food. And unfortunately, the only way to achieve that is to starve. And uh, my transformation was largely based on literally that starving, which meant I was fasting. And uh, at, there were times when I was doing 72-hour fast, like fasting for three days and sometimes two days. So it was largely based on fasting. And I just for a long while stopped uh, lifting weights and all that. It wasn't a good feeling. I was not. I was feeling my weakest. I was not feeling good inside of me. But uh, when I see the film, everything seems worth it. So there was actually no diet involved. It was just not having anything, not eating anything. Yeah. Industry in the Canada industry, uh, which is the celebrity that uh, you, you are close for and your heart goes for them. Any words on for that? Who am I close to? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Prashant Neel is a celebrity, no? <laughs> then it's yeah, him. Sure, sure. Yeah. You said that you have dubbed in Canada. Yeah. How difficult was it to capture original aesthetic language? That you should tell me when you hear my Canada, <laughs> because I think I'm blessed with an affinity for languages. I'd be modest enough to claim that much. Uh, I think when I listen to someone speaking a language, I'm able to reciprocate and reproduce. Uh, you know, if I have the lines with me. Uh, but it, this is not the first time I've dubbed in Canada. I dubbed for Salar also in Canada. My take as an actor is that your voice and uh, the way your voice lends itself to the lines you speak form a large part of your performance. And I feel a little uncomfortable letting go of that control and letting someone else perform that part of it for me. I feel a bit uncomfortable for that. And I also notice one thing that uh, whenever actors attempt dubbing in multiple languages, they usually dub in their home language, which in my case is Malayalam. And some t most times it's usually Tamil and Hindi or maybe Tamil, Hindi and maybe Telugu. I think very few people have attempted to dub in Canada, outside of Canada. I think maybe the language is tough. Maybe, I don't know. So for Salah, the first thing I told uh, Prashant when he narrated the film to me is that I want to dub in all five languages. And the first question he asked me is, uh, Canada also? I said, yes, Canada also. And I was very keen that I want to dub in Canada. And I'm fully aware of the fact that my Canada is not perfect. But I'm also aware that you are an intelligent audience. You will know that it's a Malayali actor attempting to dub in Canada and you will forgive me for the mistakes I make. So that's okay.